Well, welcome to the goat shed. Today we're going to do another video about stepper units, but this time a ball count unit. So we'll proceed with that in just a moment. So today it's Friday afternoon and it's 18 degrees Celsius, which is around about 64 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe, on this rather slightly overcast day. Now, we've done a number of videos about stepper units, I know that. But these are so important in the operation of the game, they do so many different things. So obviously the ball count counts the balls and signals the machine when the last ball has ended and it's time for the game over. Now here are all the individual parts. There we have the, the reset coil on the left, the step up coil on the right. They've both had new coil sleeves put in. There's the reset coil plunger with the link on the end of it. You always check to make sure they're not too flogged out. There's the plunger for the step up. There's the spider bearing that goes on the end of the escapement wheel. There's the escapement wheel. There's the reset arm. There's the coil stop bracket for the with the coil stop for the reset. There's the drive arm and drive pull. And this thing here is what they call a detent. That's a spring-loaded lock. I've spoken briefly about detents before. So that releases when you step up the first time. And there's the wiper finger assembly with the wiper fingers and springs. They've all been cleaned and the tops have been cleaned. And here's the frame. Now, I guess like all good manufacturers, Gottlieb decided to use the same frame for all their machines. Major difference with this one, where we did a stepper the other day, was a 0 to 9 unit, a one-way stepper. This thing here, I did speak about briefly in the previous video, this is the zero stop arm, and that's the, that's the zero stop itself. Um, what happens is, on the back, of the escapement wheel there is this pin here and that pin obviously strikes that as a limit limit stop can't go any further the pin is stopping that okay so that's that's how that works and we'll go through the adjustments of that again when we assemble it right now we have also, we have the drive arm up stop here. That's the thing that often breaks. Clearly this one's been replaced, as you can see on this game. Um, the nickel plating or whatever it is, that's been replaced at some stage. This one here looks original. Now, the good news is that on these screws, they don't appear to have been butchered too much. So that means it hasn't been moved. Uh, this is the actual back of the coil casing. Here's the other side. Screws here. And what we like to do is check all the screws while we're on the job to make sure that they're all tight. So all you do, get your screwdriver, just put a little bit of weight on there and make sure that the screws are tight. Do all your screws. That sort of comes back to good management I guess of how you look after your your games and what you do to them obviously this time this screw here and the zero stop is a big one so you need to use the right screwdriver it's very important you use the right screwdriver otherwise what happens is the this is what how the screws heads get damaged now I did have a screw head damaged here on the other side I'll just show you I don't have another one so what I've had to do where is it? That one there. That one there, you can see the head of it's been a bit a bit damaged. But I got a hacksaw and I 
just sawed it down a little bit more to fix it up. Those screw was actually rusted in a little bit. Now, I don't have a spare screw for that, so um, that's good enough for me. That's fixed. It that's, goes in quite cleanly now. And away you go. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to start assemb assembling the stepper unit, and we'll pay attention to the different things. So what I generally do is I put the escapement wheel in last, and... I'm going to put the coil casing and coil in now. Or actually, no, what I'll do, I'll put the, the drive arm in first. Now, that, that was the other thing I was going to mention. That stepper we had the other day had what we call a jam stop. Now, if you look here and here, the jam stop went on a 45 degree angle like that across there. That's where that went, where this one is totally different. That particular one here, this this up stop, controls the reset arm after it has stepped to make sure it goes cleanly into the teeth. So, also on the other step we did the, which was the problem, we had these two screw holes here and here for the other arm, which we needed to adjust up on that one to get it going properly. So. Obviously they made the frames to suit and just put the parts on that they needed. So this is the shoulder screw that goes through the drive arm into that nylon bearing. Even though it's a nylon bearing, I do like to put a light drop of oil on that, on that um, shaft. So I'll just get my oil. There we go, just a light drop on it and then I'll put it into the actual unit. Now just ensure that you've got nice movement up and down on that before you turn it over and put the nut on. See how that went straight back up more or less under its own weight? That's good. That's free as a bird. Remember I put a light bit of lubricating oil on that. We use machine oil um, or sewing machine type oil. Just a very light oil for these games. So there it is, that's the nut, that's an 11 30 second nut, you just tighten that up and then you're ready to go. So now the drive arm is on the machine and it's free as a bird, lovely. Okay, so now what we'll proceed to do is put the reset arm back on. Now the reset arm also has a a shoulder screw, now this is the screw that a lot of people forget to undo that nut and those nuts get on there and almost froze on there so you need to get, well, I use a penetrating oil to get them off, I, sometimes I let them soak half an hour an hour, they just get so tight, you'll, you'll soon know if you're going to break it, now I'm not immune, I've broken a few over my time but I think they're available from PBR, they're only about $2.60 each or something like that so if you've got a few machines it's good to have a spare the nuts are an 832 nut I actually just found some of those here in Australia which is really really weird and I bought a box of about 200 I think so probably got enough 832 nuts to do me for the rest of my life so we'll put the reset arm on now this is the reset arm here um, there's different styles of reset arm this style here is a, has the uh, has to have the um, the Bakelite bit fit on there for the coil plunger, like that. Oh, a bit hard to do backwards, isn't it? Like that. And a, a C-clip holds that on, but, you know, we can put that on after. So let's put that on. Okay, so now we've fitted that back on. And it's important that you um, make sure that the drive pull is to the right of the arm otherwise you know sometimes it's a bit hard to to get it back all right so that's fitted i put a, a drop of fine oil on that shoulder screw and there's that offending nut so you must undo that nut and you may have to lubricate it i think in some of the later ones they seem to burr the screw over sort of as a a preventative measure to stop it from coming off um, 
because they are really difficult to get off. Most of these ones with the nickel plating seem to be a little bit easier for some reason. I'm not sure, maybe the, the metal and the screws changed and got a bit softer. So there's the back end of the reset arm. As you can see, it's, it's lovely and free. You, I normally tighten the front screw up so that that binds, it's locked. And then I get it and I turn it sort of maybe just, uh, you know, basically that screw blade was straight up and down. So I've turned it about that far. Normally straight up and down, I just turned it that far. But it varies, you know, when you tighten the nut up, you've got to be careful. And you don't want that too much side play in there. That's, that's absolutely perfect. So we've done that. So now we're ready to put the coil case back on and the plunger. So remember, we've got to get the plunger's got to fit in here. So we fit the plunger in there like that. That might fall out if you're not careful after. And then we've got to put the, the spring washer on it. So that just sits on the top. So it already fell out. But let's do it again. Trying to do these things one handed is somewhat okay like that and we'll just now the spring washer oh dear there we go I'll have to do that two handed but the spring washer always sits with the cup side up see that the cupped side up so I'll just do that now and um, we'll get right so that's all in place now and the um, Allen screws are bolted down this particular screw here is left finger tight the reason is, is that an earth strap goes on that later on when we're reassembling it's part of the wiring harness. So that happens a lot on Gottlieb games, they have an earth strap there. That'll be, the earth strap there is for the ball count lights. If you don't have ball count lights, um, often that strap comes off, they break away. Often you see people just wrap the wire around there, but it's supposed to have an eyelet on it. So same on a player unit in the multiplayer games, there's an earth strap on there. Quite a lot of the, the games have it. So, right, we've got that in. Um, I've hooked some of the springs on. We've got one more spring to put on now in a minute. We've just got the, the large spring here. Let's put that on. That's on. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm trying to do this one-handed. I still haven't gone and bought myself one of those stand things. I suppose that's the least of my worries. Um, we hope you enjoy our videos. Uh, we try and make them as informative as possible. Uh, we try and make them so that if you're learning, which is the whole idea, uh, you can do this successfully. Now, a lot of people don't take the stepper unit right out of the machine like we do. That's fine. That's not a problem. We just find it so much easier to clean all the parts, so much easier to do it. I mean, the reality is, in, the, in this case, it's only a matter of unsoldering four wires, two here on the um, step-up coil and two on the reset coil. And you undo the two screws here that hold the, the switches down. And it's, it's, as I say, it's just not difficult to do. All right, so next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to fit the escapement wheel back in. And now everything's under spring tension. We'll be able to make any adjustments and observe what we need to do. If any, we may not need to make any adjustments. Let's hope so. Just one thing on the escapement wheel before I put it in. Not all of them have this, but there's that washer there. That's... I can only assume that it's a friction washer to prevent any friction between the the frame and the escapement wheel. But it's not always there, and if it's not, that's not important. A another important thing is that a lot of people ask about this big gap here. Is something broken? Is a tooth broken off? Well, no, it's not. That's deliberately broken away because that step is only designed to go five steps. So ball one, ball two, ball three, ball four, ball five, and then nothing else will happen. We'll, we'll see that when we put it back on. Now, if that was a bonus stepper, it may only go 10 steps or 15 steps. So they're not broken. The only thing I've noticed, uh, we've occasionally worked on a couple of, I think they were Chicago coin baseball pitch and bat type games. They actually had little screws that you could move and the, 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 the drive pull couldn't drive past the screws. It was quite a good idea. The, the screws were just, screw holes were just placed around the edge of the wheel and you could do what you like with it. So that was a good idea. But 
uh, I guess that made the one part multiple games. Terrific. So now I've fitted the reset arm back on. That was just a matter of um, fitting the coil back on its bracket, placing the Bakelite link on the reset arm, putting the circlip on the back of that, and tightening up those nuts. Now, pretty much we've got the stepper unit mechanically assembled. Now it's time to check all the adjustments. Now we've got all the springs in place. Now there are four springs on this. The tiny one up here is the reset arm spring that helps pull the reset arm back in place. This big long one here is the drive arm spring. Now don't be frightened to cut a couple of loops off them if they aren't quite right. You know, sometimes it is necessary to, to do that. Um, two to three links and just re-loop it and it's as good as new. They do stretch after a period of time. Now I worked in the office machine business for over 45 years and way back when I was an apprentice we were working on typewriters that were made in the 1930s and 1940s and all the old typewriter mechanics would tell you, son, that spring stretches over the years, you need to cut a bit off and you would and it would work and you'd never see the machine again. Now, here we have the torsion spring. Oh, sorry, before we go into that, the other two springs. In this case, there's a spring on the, the detent lock and there's the other spring underneath that you can just see through there. That's the drive pull spring. You've got to have all the springs on before you do these adjustments. Now, we spoke earlier about these torsion springs. Now... They're like a clock spring. You wind them up and they um, hold opposite tension to the direction that the item is moving. So people say, oh, gee, I'm frightened about undoing those. Um, I might be upsetting the factory settings. Never mind about that. Once again, they're a spring and they do lose their tension. Now, this one has a, a bend in it around about there. That's not uncommon. You used to see a lot of that, but a lot of them are now straight, up and down. There's no bend. That doesn't matter. That's just the style of the spring. Um, what's important is to get the right amount of turns on it. Now, what you'll generally find with those springs, or what I've found, and this goes back with even like main springs we used to have to do in old machines, it's generally between three to five turns. Now, five would be probably too many turns if you had to do a spring five times, but if it worked, that's okay. The main thing is if you don't tighten it up too much because you'll interfere with the upstroke on the drive, okay, there'll be too much against friction on it. So ideally three to four turns. Now, I don't count the turns. I know some people do. That's fine. Do that if you wish. I just get the feel for it. And the way to check it, seeing as this is a uh, subtracting or a rever full reversing stepper, not a subtracting stepper, um, if it was a subtracting stepper, you would simply step up once and then reset it and make sure it resets smoothly. On this one, it's just got to come all the way back. And the way to help them do that is to um, put a bit of grease on the rivets, on the plate. We use the the PBR grease, obviously, comes from PBR. It's really good. Uh, I know people use, um, I think it's called 3-in-1. I've never used it myself. I bought this PBR grease a long time ago. Works for us. So I'm going to apply some turns on this spring now, and I'll tell you how many I, I turned, and then we'll see how it works. Well, I gave it three turns, and it's snapping back into place quite good. Let's try and uh, show you that. Here we go. And nice. Again. 
So see, we can't, the pawl has reached that part of the tooth where it just can't drive any further. There's no tooth there. Normally, you just just there, that's where that tooth used to be. Can't drive any further. Okay, so we'll just reset that. Do it again. Oh, I'm just having trouble here. Here we go. She snaps back into place. So yeah, there's plenty of tension on that. I know it's a bit hard to see with me moving the camera around and everything like that, but it's as good as I can get it. So what we'll do, we'll just try something here. Tighten off this will work. Alright. No, it won't work. Never mind. I need to get around and get some picture. So, what we're going to do now is check all the adjustments on this. Now, I think I'll figure out how we can show you how that's returning. So, there's plenty of snap in that. Okay, so now we'll do our adjustments. Right, oh, we mentioned earlier about the, um, the detent, the spring loaded lock. So when the stepper, you can see how that drive arm, the bottom of the drive arm here, has fallen behind that silver piece, which is the detent. So if I release that detent, the drive arm moves forward. Now, because that drive arm's moved forward, we can now see that the drive arm has moved into the base of the tooth like that. That's what they're supposed to do. If that was incorrect, you need to adjust this screw. You need to loosen that screw there and move that plate. You can see it's got an elongation in it. But that's perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. So normally you don't get a problem with that unless someone has moved it. And you can often see that by the screws damaged. And the only way those screws get damaged is people use the wrong size screwdriver, which is very frustrating when you're trying to fix things sometimes really really bad but you know it is important if you've ever done a trade course and we're taught to use hand tools you'll know what I'm talking about use the right tool for the job okay so the next thing that we want to try is the drive arm up stop adjustment now and along with the driving of the pawl so we discussed yesterday that the pawl should only drive about half a tooth beyond so that's going to fall into place the pawl's going down and it's going down roughly about half a tooth it's probably going a little further than it needs to but it's nowhere near going to fall off the tooth so we're happy with that adjustment so that all works So what we need to do now, we need to check the adjustment of the drive arm up stop. Now I've already checked it with a bit of paper because it's too hard to do it holding the camera and it is a little tight. In other words, when I have the piece of paper in between the top of the drive arm and the bottom, when that drive arm's held up, there's too much drag. I can, can't pull the sheet of paper out easily. So the main reason that is, is because over a period of time, you've got the plunger thumping up, hitting the, the inside part of the coil stop. And of course, the plunger gets over year, years, the plunger wears a little bit, the coil stop wears a bit. So it's traveling up further than when it was originally fitted. So I like to adjust those properly, so we'll go ahead and adjust that now. And that gives you peace of mind. Once these things have been adjusted correctly, you really, really, really don't have to go near them ever again.
and that, that's for sure. Remember, if the springs are damaged or broken, you can buy spring kits uh, from PBR. They're reasonably priced. Um, there's ones for different steppers. There's ones for the one-way stepper, and there's ones for the um, resetting and subtracting steppers. So they're all available. So good news for you guys in the States. Bad news for us here because the cost of shipping. So we often try and repair springs where possible. But... That's not always possible. Sometimes you've got to buy them new. Like if you get a really badly damaged torsion spring, I have repaired one or two, but I've had a couple, mainly on Williams for some reason, I think, that were really bad and we had to replace them. Okay, so let's now um, get on and we're going to now adjust that and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've adjusted that now, and as I said, I hope everyone gets the idea, but I just needed to loosen those screws off there, those two, and just lift up the A256 drive arm stop, that silver part, just a little bit, so that I've just got drag to come out, and that gives you a pretty good clearance. So... Now it's time to put the thing back in the machine and um, adjust the wiper. So that's not too hard. We'll get in and do that right now. So there's the um, ground strap that we were talking about that's got to go under that Allen screw. So we'll fit that. Then we've got to solder the wires back on. It's funny, isn't it? We say solder. You guys in the States say solder. I could tell you a funny story about the confusion that caused when I was at the Chicago show in 2018. But we'll leave that for another day. Okay, so that's mounted up. We can hinge it back and forth. Everyone knows that, I guess. It'll come right back up. Clips in there. So let's get busy and get this thing back together. Okay, so we've got the rivet disc on and I've applied a little bit of grease. I have to clean a little bit of that off. I find a good practice when you're working on these games to cover up the hole where the cables come through with a bit of rag. You drop something, it makes it so much easier just to get it out of the rag than having to go through the whole process of trying to find it inside the machine. All right, well, just carry on here for a little bit more and um, keep putting it back together. So I've cleaned all the switches on the ball count unit and it's time to screw it back onto its base. What we generally like to do, that peg there, just advance that away so it's not resting on the switches it minimizes the resistance it just makes it a little bit easier to put in well that's what we do anyway you do what you like right oh we've got everything back together now now it's important the adjustment of the uh, I'll call it the wiper arm which is this arm here on a ball count unit there's five rivets at the top and I think there's four at the bottom to do with third ball and five ball game. When it resets, and you'll see how nice and smooth it resets, look at that. It's one rivet away. So you, it starts to the left of the first rivet. This is on a ball count unit. Now, if you're never certain, you should always reset a stepper before you disassemble it or try and figure out where it goes so it can only step up five times so ball one ball two ball three ball four ball five okay the ball drains game over and when we start a new game it resets so there we go we've completed that stepper unit we cleaned those switches on the back we made sure they were all operating correctly i did put a bit more tension on one particular switch to make it fire a little bit better 
not fire a bit better, make it close a bit better. So that's a ball count unit. There's the 0 to 9 unit we did earlier this week. And there's the replay unit has been done as well. So that's all my steppers now. I'll, I'll have to check the score earls on this game. I can just see a, a bad solder joint and a wire in there. There it is there. Need to fix that up. Hanging on by a thread. But I'll need to check the score earls at some stage. I guess the bells could do with a bit of a clean up, but uh, it doesn't matter. They work. So that's that. So I hope everyone now has a better understanding of the ball count unit and how to adjust the steppers. And remember, the adjustments are similar for every Gottlieb stepper. It's just that we have three different styles of Gottlieb, Gottlieb steppers. And that's not talking about the ASFS relays, which we've done separate videos on. All right, well, it's good now. It's kind of cleared up outside now making it for a nice winter's afternoon it's nearly um, time for a beer um, I'll just give everyone a quick look at my uh, my shed I've got a little bit of a work a couple of work benches here this one over here is a bit untidy at the moment there's my sign pinball parlor my daughter had that made for me for Christmas there a while ago oh there's one of our goat shed beer coolers and here are my games so we've got Apollo I've had this for about three years now it's in fairly good shape I've got Sing Along which we've just been working on I've had that probably five years and just decided now I should do the steppers but too busy fixing other people's games I've got King of Diamonds Look at that, I've got 1,046 and I needed the ace for specials. That's no good for, well, for an extra game and every special. All right, I've got Aquarius. This is um, a game that I've had for many, many years. This one was fully restored by Graham and myself. New legs, chrome door, everything. And there's my Tropic Isle. First pinball machine I ever played as a kid, but... 10 year old and about 1963 it's a lovely game I love Tropic Isle we've done some extensive work on that door got chromed new paint job and here's Banker Ball I've owned that for a number of years too I got that at the same time I got Apollo um, so its cabinet is a little bit rough and I will be looking at replacing that veneer and probably painting this at some stage play feels in quite good nick and here's the newest machine I've got, which I've had now for about, I don't know, 18 months at home. That's Williams Full House. I really like the early Williams games. Uh, I've got a Williams Soccer to come yet, um, which is still in the goat shed now. We're going to paint that cabinet very soon. And um, hopefully we're going to have that machine ready for our pin fest. The, unfortunately, the play field isn't in good condition and just got to wait for our professional painter to get ready to work and fix it up for me okay well this has been another goat shed presentation please give us the thumbs up and subscribe and and make any comments we appreciate that um, we hope you enjoy our videos and